it's decision time as the first stage of Premier League pool reaches its climax and we find out which 10 players will emerge from the 16 who started and make it to the weekend in Leicester. Shane Van Boning's surprise defeat to Chu Chi Yu on Thursday night left him in need of a big response against So Soa. This time the 2022 world champion prevailed by five racks. Jason Shaw will face Lung Duk Tien, and then Sanyan Pelovanovic rounds off what for him has been a wonderful first stage against SVB, who will be seeing first. That's been one of the stories, really, Jeremy, of the week so far, the way that Shane Van Boning has not asserted himself the way we would have anticipated. Yeah, I mean, that's going to happen sometimes. I mean, he got a little frustration, you could see in a few matches. I, th I think another big story is Sanjin himself, Amazing. what he's done so far, 12 out of 14, and... What it looks like to me, the math to me looks like Skyler's got to do some work to guarantee some things, but uh, the dust may be settled besides that unless Skyler doesn't get the job done in one or two of these next three matches. Okay, a great evening ahead. Let's get stuck into it with Shane Van Boning and Conrad Yusushin. You look at the players on seven and six, and then behind them, you got the guys on five. The rack's difference wins the leg. is so extreme for those guys outside the top ten. The first rack, I'm holding the break. Yeah, I'm not hoping for a mistake, but I'm interested to see if there's a big glaring mistake early from Conrad and how he handles it. He was very frustrated after that last loss. Saw him and spoke on just a touch. And uh, he doesn't show that very often, but uh, that one bothered him, that's for sure. Well, we'd seen Al Gamdi come from 4 0 down in another match in Strickland and leveled at 4 all, but ended up losing that one in a decider. And I think just barely cut off on the two here. And I'll tell you, even if it's a subtle little swerve around the purple five, you may take that on just because these guys are so good at feeling the curve of the cue ball and hitting the right side of the two, trying to go behind maybe the four and three, maybe using the eight as well. I think that's what he's doing, just a subtle little swerve like that. Got away, I think. It's real close. 
probably percentage wise the better play than the push out though taking a chance and anytime you have your player pulling out the short cue you've kind of done your job from there. See, maybe a little frustration right there. Conrad. Yeah, we saw this from him earlier in the week. He got off to that great start winning all of his first four matches, and then he lost one and couldn't buy a win, and really cut a frustrated figure. And we're seeing signs of that again now. I did see him after that reversal from 4-0 up earlier in the day, and he looked absolutely furious, not with anyone else, just with himself for the fact that he hadn't finished the job. Yeah, and he had mentioned to me that's the second time this week he was up 4-0 and, and lost a match uh, from that position. So even more so happening twice in one week. I got a little distance away from the pink four. I think he's okay. Not sure he can get to the left side of the five. It's a little touchy trying to come between the nine and five with the cue ball. So we'll see where the tip position's at. I think he can get through it. He may bump the five a little bit. Point the finger because a little upset he didn't get the ideal position on the pink four to make things much easier. Watch out for the black eight as the cue ball goes up the table and back down. such a tricky shot coming from the center of the table with the ball hanging trying to come one row out. I'm not sure he really got on the cross bank or not. He's got to hit it nice and light to have it spread and cut the ball in. What a shot. Yeah, that's the sort of shot which will ease some of that frustration which is and perhaps apparent from him in the early stages of this contest and should take a 1-0 lead here. Conor has indeed gone Winston the way of the pole. So, eyes down, Jeremy. Four eyes are better than two. The way I see it, you look at those players on three wins, so four or five is the best they can possibly get to. Strickland can get to six. Long can get to six, Melling can get to six. So basically, everyone who's got seven wins or more is through. So then it really comes down to Skylar Woodward. He's got three matches left. If he wins one of those, he'll be on seven. And really, the only way he could miss out would be if he lost them all, and there was a really big turnaround in terms of the, the break. racks difference. So that's my reading of it. Does that how it looks to you? Yeah, that's what I thought. It was, that's why I brought up his name earlier. It really looked like... He really controls a lot of people's fate, not only his own. If he gets one out of three when it comes to matches one, it looks like the 10 are set. So that could happen here early in the evening session. And then really, it's almost like we're starting the next phase already, because remember, all the wins carry forward. Oh, Soa. Currently bottom of the table, but she's won the opening rack against Wu Kun Lin. Nice shot there. A little bit of a blind pocket on the one. In a great position now on the two. Just wants to carry a little angle. That way he can get across easily for the four. Mm, might not have got much. Should be okay. Power shot's not the problem for this guy, usually. A 
Got off to a pretty good start from Boney, won five of his first seven matches. Kicked it off with a couple of hill-hill finishes on the opening day against Wu Kun Lin and Khalid Al Gamdi. But after that good start, he lost four of the next five, culminating in that really surprising defeat to Chu Chi Yu, the upset of the week, really, last night. So he was under it a bit going into the So So a match earlier today. Yeah, and this shot may have gotten a little tricky. That's why he took so much time on the five and really surprised since he did come back for the side, not getting past the six. Extension, Extension please. Now he's got to concern himself with the cue ball. Can he get around? Yeah, I didn't know about that one. I don't know if that was ever going to bite enough. Thought he may just play from underneath the seven, seeing as how he got himself in kind of a bad position on the six. So super thin here. So level at one all as it is on the other table between Wu Kun Lin and So Soa. The Skylar Woodward will be playing back to back on this table after this one against Earl Strickland and Alex Pagalai. And as we've said, if he wins either of those, then that's it. We know our 10. And even if he doesn't, he'll still have another opportunity late in the night against Noyuki Oi. for players not to take their eye off the ball, even those who are guaranteed to go through. Got to avoid the mindset of just playing things out. Now they've got to start feeling that they're in the next phase, and it's about trying to get through to Monday's play. Yeah, I totally agree. You can't let off the gas at all. And some of these players, of course, are going to have to make up some ground, so they're going to need their best pull and if you don't take advantage of what you have, you know, right in front of you, it's hard to win later. Looks like he's just rolling this forward. I don't think he's cutting it. Maybe he is. He is going for it. Got a nice kiss on the three, and then the side pocket got opened up with a pretty natural angle to get on the four. So a good position here in rack three for SVB. Yeah, last year, 15 was the mark at the end of phase two to make it into the final phase. Now, if you consider, if you go into the next phase with, say, seven or eight wins, then that means you've got to find probably about the same number again in the next phase, but you've only got nine matches to do it. Someone like Pelovanovic could have a pretty dreadful second phase and still get through. Yeah, I think the event is set up for something special when it comes down to those final 10. May not, you know, materialize that way, but we'll certainly see. Shane kind of inspecting, does he want to carry an angle on the six ball? Does he want to go forward, play for a draw stroke off the six, get in position on the seven? I thought for sure he would go forward myself. I thought that, that was the play. Yeah, I like that.
No, he lost the opener. Shane Van Boning. But has been Shane dominant since, and he leads by two racks to one. Shane Van Boning and Conrad Yushashin are both through to the next phase of Premier League pool. They're both on seven wins. They have two more chances tonight, including this one, to try and rack up one or maybe two more to take through to the weekend stage. Pretty decent break off. A little lighter than I expected or that we've seen from Conrad. Not near as much power, but... Wasn't borderline soft or anything. He just usually hits them pretty good. Is he playing this combination? Super nice shot to start. Let me change uh, what he was going to do there at the last second. I don't understand that, especially if you're going to change, usually get up back up off the ball, right, and kind of restart. Now he's going to have to make a super thin one with the cue ball. Kind of racing around the table. These two faced off in the final of the Bigfoot Challenge this year at the Derby City Classic. Conrad played a great tournament, but Shane just wasn't to be denied. Yeah, he was also last 16 at the Las Vegas Open a few weeks ago. And Got to single elimination stage of the World Championship, but went out in the last 64 to win Anton. And I think he's been playing some of the best pool I've seen him play for a while now, and pretty decent U.S. Open as well. Pretty decent rack here, his best of the match so far. And they level again at two all. Wu Kun Lin That's is right. trying to bring up two all on the other table against So Soa. Soa, one of the players just playing out now and looking to get as many wins as she can. And of course, every position that you move up the table gets you a bit more in terms of prize money. Anyone who gets through to the weekend will be guaranteed minimum four and a half thousand dollars. You get to Monday, it's six two fifty is the least you can come away with. And the winner of the Premier League on Monday will pocket twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, these are huge matches trying to climb up that leaderboard. The frack to Rex each shape I'm going in the brick. I'm not sure there's been a break-off shot that's got more venom in it than that all week. Yeah, you can see it. 
put even a little extra in it for Shane, which <laughs> isn't called upon too often. Well, you wouldn't imagine there's an extra gear to find. Yeah, I think the only one that's even close really is Kachi. Uh, Kachi really unloads on that cut break as well. Looks like he's trying to lay him behind the nine ball here. I don't know if this is laying so well to do that. Yeah, it didn't look like it was the easiest path to come off the two. The two is very close to the rail, so you're always afraid of the double kiss. That was pure, Michael. to overcut that amazing pool is. And that was a tough shot, but probably half the shot of the two ball. Dean Van Boning got to the semifinals of this event last year, and it was a good platform to then come back to the same venue in Milton Keynes six weeks later and at last become world champion for the first time. So he was defending that title in Poland just a few weeks ago, seemed to enjoy the experience of going there as defending champion and was looking really good early on. Then he threw his matches very comfortably and then found the going a bit tighter against Lucius Yap, former US Open runner-up, only won that one 11-9. And then, of course, got to the last 16 and was beaten by Duong Kwok Huang. So it was a much earlier than expected end to his first experience of defending the world title. Wong has since beaten him again, actually, in the Las Vegas Open. Yeah, if you watched him play throughout that event, which I know you did, Michael, but played pretty incredible pool, and it took a really incredible match uh, from the champion from Vietnam to take him down in that event. I thought Shane played as well as anyone to that point. That's just how tough the sport of nine ball is. Van Boning. The Shane Van Boning for the second time is a rack clear. Catching the break, trading by three. Leading 3 1 against Wu Kun Lin. Man, I still see some frustration. And again, that first kind of glaring mistake. Now, I'm sure these players have done the math like we have. They know they're clear as far as qualification into the final 10, but they all know these matches will still weigh heavy on who ends up holding this trophy come Monday evening. Looking ahead to that Monday, it's going to be a real challenge because they'll all have to play each other again, the remaining six. So that's six matches, sorry, five matches to be played there. Then if you get through, you've got a semi-final and a final the same day and seven matches basically in in one day, so that will become a challenge in itself. But I guess if you're playing in one of those big field events, if you're on the loser side, you could end up playing just as many racks in a day anyway. So it isn't really something these guys aren't accustomed to. No, once they get started, you know, the adrenaline gets going and you know, it depends on what kind of player you are as well. Some players stress a little more from shot to shot than others. Um, they all have their own way of doing things. Look at this. Ooh. Caught that a little thin to the pocket, almost lost the cue ball. But I think, you know, once you're to that point, they're all going to be settled in, well rested as best as possible, and looking to win the title. Kind of a scrappy out here so far, but a much needed one. 
trailing three to two and looking to tie to three apiece. Yeah, and it's the second breaking rack in a row that he's run out from the break. Conrad Yusushin draws level at three all. We'll have the conclusion in a moment. One or two mistakes along the way, but generally pretty good quality fare so far between Shane Van Boning and Conrad Yusushin. It's three all. Oh, and now it's 4-3. Yeah. I was only thinking earlier today, we've not seen that many golden breaks this week. I've only seen a few. Let's have another look. Looked as though it might come up dry. A little on the high side, away. yeah. And funny, he got the same kiss with the nine ball moving in the same direction on the on the last break. And I was thinking, oh, there's another golden break on the other table. No by way, Wolf. simultaneous golden breaks practically. Yeah, I was gonna say it's been a day or two since we've seen a golden break from Shane. He's the one that moves the nine the most, it seems like. The one on the other table came from Wu Kun Lin to level now at three all with So Soa. Not golden, but not dry either, and a pretty good outcome. And I, th I think it was getting a little borderline there, much lighter again with the speed. You can tell because the congestion, the balls get a lot more kisses. They don't kind of get it out of each other's way as much as when there's a little more speed into the rack. You're not familiar with the game. You might be a little confused as to what happened in that previous rack. So. Just to clarify, so long as you hit the lowest value ball remaining on the table first, any pot is legal and it keeps you at the table. And if that happens to be the nine ball, which ultimately decides every rack, then that's it. The rack is over in one shot, as happened there. That's right, and uh, there's no call shot, so anything goes there. And Colton breaks about as quick as you can win one, but Conrad's trying to... Do it pretty quickly here himself. These two have got dinner bookings made somewhere. They seem to be in a hurry to get on with it. And it's been an entertaining contest. And one which now is set to go the full distance. Never been more than a rack in it either way. That's three breaking racks in a row that Yusa Shin has run out from the break. And so it's four apiece. I know some people think the golden break should be eliminated from the game. You should get the nine ball back on the table and spot it. But it's a great moment when it happens, and it brings a bit of variety. So I don't think there's much widespread support for any change like that. No, a little luck uh, is in every sport. I mean, that's why call shot rules to me are, are just not meant for rotation. hate to try and outsmart these people that that created these games try going to invent a sport that'll last a couple hundred years you got to have it down pretty good very well put starting rack shame for bowling the break 
How about another one to finish it off? Yeah, well, I wouldn't doubt he gets some movement on it. Well, he's really throwing the wrist into it right at impact. He always has, but it seems like even more than usual. Can't tell if the two's really playable. That will help Shane if it isn't pl so playable uh, as far as, you know, having a little more wiggle room on the safety, you might say. I could slowly kind of go through the one, just letting the one come up maybe to the head string using the three as a snooker. Probably the shot I like the best, especially if the two is covered up a bit. Yeah, this shot here. This is going to get in the gap maybe. No, he's pretty good. And you don't mind the kick. You don't mind the jump again if the two's a little covered up. Not a ton of future for Conrad in this shot. And that's why he's looking at the two and going away from the jump. You'd rather try to play some type of safety off the kick shot. Watch out, nine ball. Okay, the one's going to get past it. Shane has a couple of nice options here with the eight or the two four. Not taking much time, so he must be going behind the two four, I would guess. Yeah, I don't know if he got the snooker here. It's close. He didn't. Conrad may try and pull off a shot here to open these balls. Swerve this. Yeah, he's going to swerve it just a touch. The reason he's doing this is because the three's on the back rail. If he can get some separation here, maybe leave something difficult for Conrad. Really nice hit there. Might get a little nine ball action here, Michael. Oh, the nine's a little above the two, excuse me. Bit of a loose one and chance now for Van Boning to win this. Wow, he oh. he went and looked oh. from behind to see if the scratch was possible. Falling. And I still don't know why he played it with inside instead of just coming one rail between the three nine to the in rail. It looks pretty cold blooded and you couldn't fit a playing card between the cue ball and the nine. But. Shashin has been the streakiest player here this week. Won his first four, lost his next four, won his next three, and looked as though he was going to follow that by losing his next three. But the chance has very swiftly been handed back to him. And he'll feel a lot better about things. He was cutting a frustrated figure earlier in the day after that defeat from 4-0 up. And indeed in the early stages of this match. And this is going to be a pretty decent performance and a very nice result. Still got one more match to come against Chu Chi Yu. And an opportunity to strengthen his position even further. Shane Van Boning, though, continues to struggle. He stays on seven wins with only one more to play. The scratch in the deciding rack, proving decisive. Conrad Yusashin cleaned up from there. He's beaten Shane Van Boning by five racks to four. They'll both be in the next phase. Skylar Woodward needs one more win to make sure of joining them. He's got three chances to get it, and the first of those is against Earl Strickland next.
256 hopefuls go into action over six days. When an irresistible force meets an immovable object, something is got to give, but nothing is given yet. Final of a matchroom promoted tournament, the majors in the game. against an opponent of this quality. Not quite as close as it's been for him in the last couple of rounds. are designed and manufactured from the highest quality, sustainable hardwoods, utilizing world-renowned designs. Diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability. After all, they are designed by players for players. The championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo Champion of Champions! It's time for a little bit of damage down. Shane Van Boning had a golden break to lead 4-3 against Conrad Yusushin, but he ended up going to a deciding rack in which a scratch from him at a key stage proved decisive. The pole has won by five racks to four, and he's talking now to Jeremy. 
Hey, Conrad, a good shooting and a good win. Uh, spoke with you a little bit after your loss this afternoon against Khalid. You were upset. <laughs> I had to feel better to rebound, and especially against SVB. If I've been honest, uh, I don't remember my match with SF SFB. I still with match my match with Khalid. Uh, I'm so angry still. Uh, I was sitting for zero, so I play really good. But this is time ball. Everything is possible. Yeah, well, you're on to the the final ten. You're looking to improve. You got one match left. Any thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I have one match with a uh, girl from uh, Taiwan, Chinese, Chinese Taipei, uh, and I have to be uh, focused on this match, uh, not like with SFB, uh, but because it's not possible to win all the time if I'm not on the on the table. That's right. Well, good luck tonight and good luck moving on. Thank you. So that takes Yusa Shin on to eight wins. One match still to play this evening. Shane Van Boning is now in ninth place there with seven wins. He's only got one more match to go. It is possible he could end up going through last of the 10 qualifiers. Van Boning the winner against Yusa Shin in the Derby City Classic Bigfoot Challenge final earlier in the year. Also when they met in the Las Vegas Open just a few weeks ago. But this evening in Leicester, it's Yusa Shin who has won. Result from the other table as well. Wu Kun Lin continuing his turnaround after a difficult start, beating So Soa by five racks to three. Yusa Shin was due to be next up on table two against Chu Chi Yu, but I believe that's been switched, and Wu Kun Lin is going to stay on to play Francisco Sanchez Ruiz instead. Here on the main table, it's Skylar Woodward against Earl Strickland, and Woodward, as you can see, is currently occupying that tenth and final qualifying position. If he can win this match, he will be guaranteed to still be around for the weekend. Scala wins the lag. A little light with the lag from Earl. Pretty decent one from Scala, so it may not have been beat anyways. Scala's been a little up and down with the break shot this week. It's been either really good or I wouldn't say bad, just not results maybe at, at times. That's what he wants. It's always scary with the kiss on the cue ball, but pretty decent look at the two, the three, five tied up. So we'll see an opening safety here. A very productive Thursday when all three of his matches whitewashed Khalid Al Gamdi. 5-3 against So So it was his closest match yesterday. He rounded off the day with a 5-2 win over Long Duk Tien. But he hasn't actually been involved yet today. All three of his matches on this final day in the evening session. So while everyone else has been playing, he's been able to have a rest. And I believe an Italian meal with you, Jeremy. What was his vibe ahead of this uh, busy evening? Uh, he felt pretty good. I mean, sometimes he brought up that, you know, he's not sure of some things at times, like, you know, why maybe a mistake comes in here and there, maybe a decision that isn't maybe the best. But, you know, we talked about some things, we laughed it off, and what I told him the most is what I saw in the first few days, it looked like he was a little stressing over more shots than we see from especially him. So I think yesterday, I told him that prior to yesterday, and he played a little more relaxed. Decent contact there on the two, especially with the three five tied up. That's an important hit. Earl Strickland comes into this on the back of three straight defeats. He's won four of his 13 matches this week. I think he's been a really good addition to the event, though, even if he is bowing out of it tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, we're a little unlucky. He really didn't get his confidence really brewing like. Uh, it's it's a you know real thing with Earl when things get going his way. He's a tough guy to beat even at, at 61 years old. If he'd managed to get back-to-back -back wins at any stage, it could have been a different story. But every one of those four wins was followed with a defeat in the next match. Yeah, good point, Michael. And if any event, you know, you always want to keep winning, but this is definitely an event where 
momentum can carry you a long ways. And we saw with Sanjin, he hasn't let off the gas. Not at all. Jason Shaw, Naoki Oi. Extension called. And all three of those names I just mentioned, if you think about the way they play, you don't really get ups and downs. Now, Oi, of course, he's a faster player. Sanjin, not such a fast player. Then you have Jason Shaw that's kind of in the middle that just never seems oh, so to stress. Fast. So, I mean, I think that kind of no coincidence that they've done so well. And please start the clock. You talk about momentum. Skylar Woodward certainly generated plenty of that when he did get through to the second phase last year. At one point, he won six matches in a row, and in that second phase, he won seven out of nine in total to really drag himself from the lower reaches of the table through to the final day. But he only won one match on that last day, so didn't make the semi-final stage. It really would be astonishing, though, if Woodward didn't claim that one remaining spot, wouldn't it? Because he'd have to lose all three of the matches. Chris Melling would need a comfortable win in his match, and Woodward would maybe need one or two heavy defeats in those three. So an awful lot of things would have to go wrong for him to miss out from here. Yeah, but you got to cross that finish line. I mean, you can't say to yourself, what are the chances? We say that, we used to say that in the middle of the games, what are the chances to make this kick shot or jump shot or whatever it is, and they keep proving you wrong. Earl Strickland. Earl Strickland That's will be best. signing off tonight with two matches, and he's taken the opening rack in the first of those against Skylar Woodward. Over on the other table, Wu Kun Lin, who's already had a win this evening, has won the first rack against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. That will actually be FSR's last match and that will determine whether he goes through to the next phase with nine or ten points on the board. I think you're seeing tonight why it's so important in this format that all the wins do carry forward to the next phase, because otherwise we'd have a lot of matches tonight which so wouldn't so really have anything much on them. No, absolutely. I mean, this is well thought of and thought through. Everything about it, the prize money breakdown all the way through for the players that, you know, obviously aren't going to make the final 10. They're still playing for something and something so substantial. It's been his big problem this week, Strickland. At times in open play, he's looked quite good, although he has thrown in a few too many unexpected misses. But from what you've seen of the break and from what you know of it, is it something that he can go away and work on and improve on significantly for other tournaments later in the year? Yeah, and, and really not only the break shot, I, I think if Earl's going to continue on, really trying to play a lot of events, and, and I think he should. I mean, we've seen uh, the brilliance still at times, and, and I think he's really just got to pick apart why misses happen, why the break isn't working. I think he quickly changes things, which is hard to get a... Really good information when you do that, I think, or solid information, let's say. Which there was a lot of frustration in the break this week. I think he had something like 17 dry breaks to start. I don't know how many kisses and bad scratches he got as well. I think Earl was making up his own stats to illustrate the point, but yeah, if it was exaggeration, it wasn't by much. Really has been his Achilles heel throughout this tournament. Right, this rack's all about speed control. Everything's fairly natural. Control to the center of the table. Have an angle on the six to come around the seven nine. Just don't overdraw this too much. And he held the angle nicely. This here, you just want to stay off the rail with the cue ball. There are some funny angles, but not many, as long as, like I said, you're off the rail. So the 
Looks like he'll play from underneath the eight, most likely anyways. He may draw above it. Don't really see the point, though. Yeah, he's making that decision now, and it's a little off angle to where if the draw stroke isn't so pure, you could end up short coming across. That's why I think forward has got to be the shot. Even if you go forward and then above the eight, that's okay. Well, that's got to go. Man, I'm really curious why ending up short there, but shouldn't be a problem. Kind of a bread butter shot for, for Skyler. Squeezed at home, as we say. Skyler Woodward looking for his fourth win in a row here. And he's got his first rack on the board. He's level with Earl Strickland at one apiece. I know golfers of a current generation are always thrilled if they get paired with Tiger Woods in a big event. You think of a tennis player getting to play Federer or a snooker player getting to play Ronnie O'Sullivan. Is it the same for these guys when they get the opportunity to play Earl Strickland, particularly as they know he probably won't be playing for much longer and the opportunity might not come around again? Yeah, absolutely. I think we saw that with the interview with Sanjin, even when there was a, a little drama in, in the match. I mean, you can at least say I got to play one of the greatest, if not the greatest, um, that's ever played. And I definitely felt that with the team this year in Vegas. Uh, every, every one of them was very enthused to get to play with Earl, even with the ups and downs. A little off, a little quick with the stroke. Did get one down and got a heck of a spread up table with some five or six balls going to, in that direction. Not just within pool either. I know from my own experience when I said I was going to be going off to do my first pool tournament some years ago, first question I was asked was, is Earl Strickland playing in it? So even in the wider public, those who are interested in sport but maybe not particularly pool, they know who he is. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder, he's going to be aggressive, it looks like. I thought he may lay up here. Is he going to go for a three-ball combination? Well, this is okay. He can still get a very solid safety. Thing is, is he going to be able to develop the four ball at all? And the four is still going to be difficult. I think, anyways. Really did nice with the ball placement there. Not letting the three come above the purple five. Making the one rail escape a little easier. Looks like the nine is a little trouble if he's trying to get to the third rail. Nice hit. He's going to get a little reward maybe. I'm not sure if the three shootable or not. It's close. Was in a difficult position in this tournament, Skylar Woodward. He only won two of his first seven matches. Well, that was a ratio which was clearly going to have to improve significantly. Even after nine matches, he only had three wins. Has really turned it around, much as he did last year. Wow, well, that one squeaked home. And that's, I was going to say, the shot on the four is where Skylar needs to take a little more time, you know, between each shot and recognize, of course, you want an angle on the five, but there's a lot of room to get less angle to make things a lot easier and a lot more, less stress. And those are from simple positions. It's almost like that's the times that it gets the best of the players. You know, when they're in a funny position, they always take the time to figure things out. Well, Earl Strickland won the first rack, and got pegged back to one all. Didn't get the bit of good fortune when he needed it in that rack, and Skylar Woodward got the opportunity from which he has taken a 2-1 lead.
Skylar Woodward has three chances tonight to get the one remaining win he needs to get through to the next phase of the Premier League. And he won't want to leave himself relying on the third time being the charm. He wants to get this wrapped up, and he's going the right way about it at the moment. He leads Earl Strickland 2-1. Super thin hit on the one there. And really can't expect a whole lot after that thin of a hit. Could have lost the cue ball right off the one in that corner. Push. Push out cold. The options got up. I'm not sure the shot from here. I got to look at this one a bit. He's kind of sizing up the cross side bank, trying to bring the cue ball to the end rail. And one good thing about that is if you do make it, the three off the four is pretty easy into the side pocket from what looks like a bad position. Pretty nifty little shot there. It's going to be hard to play a safety. The purple five is really cutting her off as far as running the cue ball. May see him elevate here and try and draw off the two to the right of the five and swing the cue ball a couple rails towards the seven. Otherwise, I'm not really sure he can do much. Good effort, but that was always going to be, you know, you're always going to be an underdog trying to get that up behind the five. He did cut off the pocket, though, so he'll live to kick another day. He has the cross table kick, even with a lot of spin. This is okay. Like a light, medium speed, maybe you get behind the seven. Huh? Worked out. Here he's going to chop the two. It looks like behind the seven and run the cue ball. I don't think he's going to get the snooker. Maybe with the nine, and if he doesn't, the seven's a big ball to return a snooker on. Oh, really nice hit there. Didn't let the cue ball spread too much, so that's a real clean strike on the cue ball. There is a story you often hear about Earl Strickland, Jeremy, that a prize of a million dollars had been put up for someone to win ten racks in a row, and he ran eleven. But then. There was an issue over the prize actually being paid, and it ended up in court. So on what grounds were the people who put up the prize refusing to pay it? Um, I wasn't at that event. I was actually in Dallas at uh, 
a, a PCA event, which was an association a long time ago, but I think that was 1997. It could have been 98, but um, it had to do something with the filming once someone had run so many racks. Uh, what a little bit of an unlucky roll and go into those balls and not come away with a little something more. Now a little gamble there going into those balls, but something to do with you had to start filming at a certain point uh, to give it to the insurance company and it did get settled and, and from what I heard it was a nice settlement, but I think that's what it was, something, something like that. That's got to go to get a rail. It's going to serve up ball in hand. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, I wasn't. Sorry. Sorry, Yeah, my fault. Sorry. Ball in hand. Sorry. He's going to shoot the combo. Him, That's interesting. Not saying it's real missable, but open table. It's Strickland. And with that, it's a very abrupt end to the rack. Two all between Skylar Woodward and Earl Strickland. Yeah, the version of the story I heard is that he did get a decent settlement in the end, but it had cost him so much in legal fees to get it that it was barely worth it. But I also heard he took it all in good grace. Yeah. Um, you know, just like a couple years ago with the COVID thing on the plane and it was the trace thing. And I was in the room when that news got delivered to Earl, of course, being captain. And um, he took that. As best, I mean, I, I would have been much more upset. I know he was upset, but at least at the moment he took it like a champion, and I'm sure it was the same thing there in Dallas. That was the moment that ball in hand was given up and a very makeable combination was left. 2-2. Two -two. Well, this two ball is going to dress up pretty nicely or the break that he wanted. Yeah, what you're referring to there is when he traveled over to London for the Moscone Cup in late 2021. But he didn't have COVID himself, did he? He was identified as a close contact, and that was why he had to sit it out. Yeah, the rules everywhere uh, were touch and go and changed daily, and UK was no different. And everyone on that flight, if you had not had a vaccine, uh, you were under the trace um, situation and therefore had to quarantine. I think the biggest issue of it all was just to, it got delayed, you know, some four or five days before all this kind of transpired and therefore I had to kind of play with about a day's notice. Yeah, you stepped in with cue in hand as captain. There wasn't really any other option i suppose but who was it came up with the idea did you think well i'm gonna have to play or was it the organizers who suggested it yeah it's just uh, like i said if if we had had more time i think even with more time there may have been some type of way to rectify with earl being able to play but the government had to make a decision in a short period of time and and uh therefore we didn't have time to get another player over there were some players talked about just in case the situation came up. I brought my cue stick, not really thinking about playing, but I was going to be in London so long and training with the guys. Why not? Skyler Woodward was one of those guys, and he now leads Earl Strickland by three racks to two. Over on the other table, Wu Kun Lin is a few balls away from closing to 3-2 behind against Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. FSR will be the first player to complete his schedule of 15 matches. If he wins that one, he'll take 10 forward to the next phase. Wukun Lin still got one more to play after this, so he can get as high as nine if he was to win this one. Wukun Lin wins the rack. Yeah, and you look at a Rex player like Wukun Lin, who's no stranger to big, pitch. big tournaments, but Getting to play all these matches here early in 2023, getting so much time on the table against all these great players that, you know, being from Chinese Taipei, doesn't get to play all the events with, with the players. And, oh, almost a nine on the break. I think it's going to serve him well for the remainder of the year. Yeah, just to clarify that, the table I was looking at, not updated. He is actually already on 
eight wins after his win earlier this evening. So still holds, though, that he can get to nine, but he'd only have to win that match to do it. Now Earl Strickland, is he going to take on the jump shot? Going for some kind of hardware. He's going to need an extension if he hasn't already called it. I guess he has. Side pocket. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, that would never happen, would it? <laughs> Not for a criminal like me. I think he's got to play the two off the nine here. I know the speed, he doesn't like that because that type of shot you want to hit with a little more speed, but. Extension, Extension please. So that brings the seven in play as far as getting snookered, getting on the three. But I think he's still got to do it. Doesn't have to hit it super hard to make the two off the nine. He may have to shoot the three from long distance, but what else do you really have? Oh, he's playing a very touchy safety. Pretty nice. If you are new to the game, you might not be aware of the legend of Earl Strickland and everything he's accomplished. He was the first ever winner of the World Championship in 1990. Won it again the next year. Still the only player ever to go back to back in that event. The other big standout individual title in the sport, the US Open. He's won that five times, a record he shares with Shane Van Boning. He also shares the record for the Bones. most Moscone Cup wins. Start again, please. Yeah, and he was always one of those players talked about that when he got to the final, his record in the final was just incredible. You talk about winning tournaments and why some are so much better or have such a better record, it's just because that's when the nerves are the highest and that's where the separation really comes in. Won those five US Opens from five appearances in the final, same as Van Boning. Yeah, my first pro final I ever made, Earl robbed me and like I wasn't even there. Of course, I was a little overly happy to make the final and probably lost a little focus, but it didn't take him long for him to kind of put his wheel. And, uh, in. Yeah, so Marcel Eckhart calling off. second foul there, and in case you're not aware, that's because a third one would end the rack. Man, Schuyler's looking to see if he can bang the no, two around. Didn't. Trying to use the eight as a blocker. Maybe get the two a little below the six, something like that. Make the kick shot kind of funny. Uh-oh, he might make the nine here. I'll have to remind you, you're on two fouls. If you commit a foul on your next shot, you're going to lose two. Well, the seven got right in the way of the natural hit. This is not easy. What a hit. I'll tell you, that hit means something. I think the eight is a little funny. So, of course, he would have lost the game. I guess that's an obvious statement, but still going to make Skyler earn it. Where was that final? You were saying your first ever was against Strickland. <clears throat> that was in Kansas City, uh, the Camel Pro Billiard Series, which was a great tour back in uh, the mid to late 90s. Actually, R.J. Reynolds, the tobacco company, was the, actually ran the tour. I know tobacco sponsorship is outlawed in this part of the world now. Is it the same in the States? Yes, it is, yeah. Curious if he's going to shoot a 7-9 here, maybe? 
it's not the worst shot. The nine's so sitting so well over the side pocket. I personally think now he's going to try and move it. And that may make, I don't understand that. That's not thinking it through. He may have gotten fortunate with the eight, nine wiring up. But if you think about it, you could just get on the six to fall behind the seven. And then the seven, nine is pretty easy. I think the eight, nine shootable myself. But as you say, he had no need to leave himself in that position. It looked fairly routine from where he was. Yeah, and I understand what he was trying to do, open up the nine, but that's just not recognizing the entire situation with the balls. You know, if that's another ball in the way, you know, that's, but the nine was a winner over the side and the seven. You can see, great camera angle. Been, would have been a pretty easy combination overall. Is he going into these? Wow, a lot of double kisses here. Yeah. May have gotten fortunate enough to play some type of paper thin safety off the eight. And as they say, he kind of painted himself into a corner here, Michael. Really got tangled up unnecessarily. Look to be heading for breaking on the hill in the next rack and Suddenly it's a wide open contest again. Yeah, and this is playable on the side. It's no gimme, but not difficult. But he's made it to the hill in the end. Skylar Woodward Skylar has gone too clear for the first time. It's 4-2. such a he battle since break. midday on Monday to be one lead. of those ten players through to the next phase of this Premier League Skylar Woodward is one rack away from ending the conversation and completing our lineup oh, he was a little quick on one break off but overall Seems like he's starting to get a little more tuned in with the one in the side. Don't know. He's got to go for this bank on the two with the six hanging. He's such a great banker of the ball. Or maybe he doesn't see it. I don't see how he can't bank at this. Okay, he did. Maybe he was just trying to figure out how he wanted to play the cue ball. Looking like this could be the end, and 
If it is, it'll be the last time we see Earl Strickland on the main table. He's had his wins here. Beat Chu Chi Yu, Conrad Yusashin, Chris Melling, and Khalid Al Gamdi. You think back to his first match. Indeed, it was the first match on the main table last Monday. He was only beaten in a Hill Hill finish by Alban Ocean, and you just wonder if he could have got the W then. Might it have been a different story? Wouldn't have become so bogged down and could have got a few more wins and been more of a factor. I totally agree with you, Michael. And he takes it to heart, you know, that's the thing. And, you know, that's what, part of the reason why he was so great. But in certain formats, probably this one, most exclusively, uh, you have to be able to leave it behind and leave it behind quickly. He will still have one more match to play, but that'll be on the other table. Can, of course, watch all the Table 2 matches on Matchroom Multisport YouTube throughout the tournament here in Leicester. To Skylar Woodward. Needed one win coming into tonight. He knew he had three chances to get it, but he's only needed one of them. From two all, he's pulled away with three racks in a row. A strong finish sees Skylar Woodward emerge the winner by five racks to two and claim the last place in the next phase. Now it's all about building wins to carry forward through to the weekend stage. And he'll start that task against Alex Pagalion in a few minutes' time. pool table. Diamond tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality, sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs. Diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability. After all, they are designed by players for players. The championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo Champion of Champions! It's time. 
And so tagline back to back, then Shaw plays Long Duck Tian, and then we finish with SVB versus Pelovanovic. Joining me for the next two matches, former European Moscone Cup captain, former World Pool Masters champion, Alex Laley. Yes, yes. Let's see Woodward against Pegaline. It's basically a match for Sunday evening's okay. ranking. Thanks, players. Stage Thanks, two like has already commenced. Everyone guaranteed of a spot in the last ten in stage two. Now it's about gaining points. Building a buffer for Peggy Lyon or for Woodward. Wins the closing <laughs> the gap. Sunday night, six players will remain. Round. Alex Pagelein to break. And then on Monday, same thing again, round robin to determine who makes the playoffs, the last four in the semifinals. Let's go. Pagelein looked sharp yesterday. Deep concentration. Very interesting match, as is for me, particularly the last one of the evening, SVB against Peglivanovic. Just to see, to know if young Sanjin will be able to finish this as clinical as he has been throughout the whole five days. Push, Push out cold. <coughs> Um, like your choice. What does he have? Woodward will give it back. 
I would think, but he seems to already have something in mind. Really? A cut? Wow. <laughs> Great shot. In a way, a pity, because I was curious to see what Peggy Line had in mind. I'm sure he wouldn't have gone for the cut shot. Yeah, I said the other day, maybe yesterday, I feel like Woodward's really stands out with them shots. You know, like I know you said Shane's very good at them, and I agree. Woodward is very high up on the rankings with them thin snips. That's why he took it on. And because he took it on, this is why Pagaline's going to be gelled on the green six ball. Watch the cue ball after contact. See how it just runs forward a little bit and nestles in on the six. So Woodward, very attacking, good shot, and now he's in a good position. Yeah. Woodward on a roll, won all three matches yesterday. His first match this evening against Earl. We'll look to carry his momentum forward until tomorrow and then some. Foul stroke. Five ball, ball tied up by block. the seven. Let's see how he opens it. If it doesn't pass the seven, I don't think it does. I think go forward with a slight angle. Brush it, push it over. Or hold the cue ball here, he's going into his full. see if he'll try to cross over below the side pocket snatchy yeah he'll be disappointed there because as you said we're at the point now where the players are going to be looking at qualifying for the final six now that's the, the stage we're at we didn't think we would be at this stage. We thought tonight's matches could really come down to some nervy moments, but it's just the way it's felt. Well, look at that. Can you believe this? Can you believe this? good nervy opening wreck yeah I mean obviously Bagaline missed the seven somehow and he, he fell in and he got lucky where he landed but Woodward won't think about that Woodward's thinking about the ball he missed of course he is his own fault he's lost the opening rack here Pagaline takes the first Pagaline wins the rack where are we at? Pagalion sits in fifth, Alex nine points. He's got two matches left. He's going to play back-to-back -back matches after this one. He'll be playing Ocean. This is table two. Yushishin versus Chen Yu. Yeah, Yushishin, feeling good. Yeah, and this is the ladies world nine ball oh, champion the current back. champion this will be a final match in this year's event three wins can she get a fourth yeah Yushishin we spoke him he came up after beating with luck SVB SVB scratched on the in the hill hill case game back to 
But he admitted he was still thinking Anyone back to his loss against Al Gandhi, where he was leading 4 0 earlier today. That's what round robin play does to you. Now, two is makeable, but it's frozen on the rail. Still tough, but. Needs to play a good rack here, Woodward, to erase the thought of that missed seven. Would have been such a good rack with the push out that didn't cut. Seems just too much angle to draw and miss the eight ball. Yeah, done well there to find the eight ball. I think a little bit of him would have known if he misses it, he would still have had a shot on this ball. Instinct pool player, Mr. Woodward, just sees the shot, kind of gets down and a lot of the time plays the opening shot that he's thought of. So this is why he's dangerous. He's dangerous in this format. He can really go on one and start beating the players and crawl up that leaderboard. Yeah, he's not one to see problems. He sees opportunity. And he's a very creative player. In the USA, there's a lot of bar box pool, so they play on small tables, leagues, tournaments. And he's very good at that. And I think it's there that he picked up all those creative shots. Yeah, so the mistake from Woodward in the opening the rack. rack has been put to bed as he ties this match up 1 1. Alex Pegger lying stoic in his chair, trying to find deep focus. He, no, he doesn't complain, but he'll mention about 15 times a day that the 30 second shot clock poses a problem or a challenge at least. Not for Skyler Woodward. It does something to your time perception when you play against a player who's really quick or really slow. Alex Pagalina, former World Nine Ball champion. That was a long time ago. He won it when Matchroom originally had the, the World Nine Ball Championships. 05 in Kaohsiung, to break. Chinese Taipei. Yeah, and he lost in the final the year before. And then obviously the World Nine Ball went over to Qatar, where it was hard to follow, let's just say. <laughs> Good to see it back where it belongs. Golden break, Pagaline with a quick one. Wow, what a time. We've seen quite a lot of Goldens today. This one goes in favour of Alex Pagalai. And here's another look. There goes the nine in the side pocket. It's Pagalai two, Skylar Woodward one.
Rack four, Woodward to break. We saw a golden break, nine will break by Peggy Line. Break. The umptieth today. Two racks and two. why is it that we see so many? Because the players are getting better control over the cue ball on the break. They're breaking better, they're impacting the nine ball more often and with more speed. The bank cross side is on. It's a little awkward cue ball being so close to it. It's nicer to hit that bank when you're a diamond further from the two ball. Is it go time? Woodward can play a good save from here. Beautiful. A sidestep bank. Squeezing the object ball in. Leave an angle on the floor here. Four and five go to the same pocket. Most important to not be on the rail. back possibly with right spin no straight draw little gesture there discontent woodward the wrong side of the six it's always nice to see nine ball and here nine ball like this many shots where the ball hits the back of the pocket almost dead straight Going forward, catching that extra rail two inches further from the short rail, should get this. And a very swift a break and run back. by Woodward. Trading blows back and forth, Peggy Lyon and Woodward with Peggy Lyon to break in break five. Over, Over on, on the, the other, other table. <laughs> Over on the other table, this is what we are faced with, comrades. Come on, just to show us the well, We know he can play quick, he can play very quick, and he's off to a flyer, four rack to zero. Over Cho Che Yu, that will be a final match of this event. Just the three wins, and so so will be playing Earl Strickland on table two. A little later on, and if she wins, well, she would go above right Cho Che Yu. Hags Pack line to break. Scores are tied, two racks each. Not that it matters, obviously, they're not going to be back playing in this event. They're out, but at least she wouldn't finish last. Third break for Pega Line. Very much inward, the cue ball. Nice tester on the two ball here. By the way, Peggy Lyon has been experimenting a lot. Different shafts, different cues on the break, switching sides. Where other players in pool very much stick to the same thing once they trust it and perfect it they really like to do the same thing Alex Pegelein is a very knowledgeable player always looking to get more knowledge and information and in so doing 
creating the possibility of creating more options, more choice. on the floor and staying away from the long rail <coughs> now play for the five in the side he has a line but it's very difficult speed wise alternative is to go into the balls but I think he'll just play for the five never go long maybe too slow but never go long Beautiful. Right? He's there. Nice shot. Prides himself in a good cue ball, does Alex? He said that in the com box yesterday. He's all about the cue ball, he'll tell you. I was thinking, Carl, a specific a event call. with a 15 second shot clock and have the eight fastest players in the circuit compete for a nice prize fund yeah that would be easy on the eye wouldn't it <laughs> yeah well Eustachian would be one of them get back to center table little to the right of that hmm it's a lot of angle so Yushishin on the right on table two has blitz Cho Che Yu winning two out of three matches today finishing with nine wins out of 15 Alex is feeling frisky. Starting to play better and better throughout the event. Wins the round. There goes the nine ball. Nice run out there. It was all about the shot on the purple five. Perfect speed control as he goes in front once again. Next up on table two. Well, it's a bit of a swan song because both these players are out. That match is going to be between Chris Mallion and Khalid Al Gamdi. You can watch that on the Matchroom Multisport YouTube channel. Maybe Mellon will go swing at some wild shots. Now he knows his time is done. Just the five wins out of 14 for Chris. He will be disappointed. He would have had high hopes here this week. This event, the way it's laid out, really suits his style, but struggled with his tip and his cue. Just signed a new cue deal, so I'm sure he will bounce back from this. Skyler Woodward's break. Trailing three racks to two. Look at that. Pot on the two ball will be easy. The route to the three will not. Push out call. No, no. Oh, sorry. Cancel. Same route, whether the three ball goes or not. If it does it past the eight ball, just with more speed. End up on the right of the three ball.
full pocket available. Now, the next challenge will be the seven. But almost two diamonds of space, of felt available between the seven and nine. Here's a slight angle on the five. It's not improbable that it'll go off of the nine. Taking no risk gives himself a perfect angle. Shot. I'm looking forward to the next two days, the next three days. The level is going up and will go up even more. Yeah, no disrespect to the players we've lost, but... All ten of these players are all going to be beating each other. We're going to have close matches, five fours, five threes. Extension and the players control. will know we're at the business end now. You know, there's there's more there's more cash to be won at this stage of the event, so the players will be knuckling down. Yeah, we've seen a number of matches today where it went back and forth. Many open shots after the break. And also in this Sorry, one we'll between back. Woodward and Peggy Lyon, the slugfest. Lion won the lag, and that will be important in this match and in matches to come. Rack seven. Because the run out Tag ability is going up. Time. Three racks each. And will be high come the next three days. So win the lag, you get the first break, and the last if it goes hill hill. Wow. Again? <laughs> Again? Nice line. Wins the rack. I think golden break number six that I have witnessed today. Yeah, it's hard work when you're a player. Skyler's got to feel sick at this just because it's a cheap rack, isn't it? I know it's it's part of the game, but you know when you're in Skyler's seat, you're just absolutely sick. But there's positives there. Skyler Woodward is on a four-match win streak. Yeah. Wants to keep the momentum.
Rack eight. Skylar Woodward to break. Trailing four racks to three. Don't overpower this. Play a good cue ball. Swing the base. Although the two ball, I don't think it cuts. Go in, man. Bank very makeable, especially for Skyler. One of the best to edit. Saw no value in attacking the two. As the three ball was tied up. Played this nicely. Would have liked that three ball to open up completely. Well, Tagline will hit this two ball. So, does he want the three ball open? Maybe after this shot, he'd have a different view. Will be difficult to hold the cue ball here down table. Ha ha ha, beautiful. So what he did, he played it with a rolling cue ball. So there's top spin on the ball, which killed the cue ball after the short rail. You'll see the reaction. He wanted to move and then got pulled back. The top spin after the rail becomes back spin. Yeah, Skyler can pot this ball. Extension call. But it's all going to be about the three ball, the red three ball. I think you pot the two to play safe on the three. Unless, of course, he plays this with a lot of speed. Maybe rail first. Do you think do you think the players are aggressive today tonight because they know they're qualified and they want to test themselves see if they can make something work or is it also just the nature of the event so many matches so much pool yeah i think obviously when we when we see mistakes you know, we've got to remember they're here all day, really, even when they're not playing the matches. They're still at the venue, they're hitting balls, long days. You're not going to be focused every match. I mean, I don't think anybody would be, would they? But I know what you mean. I think maybe it just gets to the point where you start swinging at a few more. Most focus on the object ball. The cue ball being a possible bonus. Didn't get the cue ball behind the four. So an easy hit on the three. Now did that notch off the seven open up the lane for the three? Big smile from Skyler. I think it did. These cuts with the rest. Yeah, Alex has played a little bit of snooker over the years. He even went to Q school a few times, didn't he? Yeah, he, came, the main he, well, he came close to qualifying, and I think he did participate in some events where they where they were missing main tour players and got some reserve cool. players. Yeah, so off the back of that, he's going to be pretty good with this element, the bridge. He's played a lot of snooker growing up in Canada. Moved to Canada as a teenager.
Falling well short, though. Holding the cue ball behind the six slash seven. here a jump cue yeah as little distance as there is between the seven and the cue ball still choosing to go airborne it was a tight gap for Skyler all in hand please start the clock well, look at that angle. It wasn't too bad, actually. Lacey just didn't make it over. Bowling on for Pagalai, and he's on the hill. This is for the point. And he will stay on this table. So this will put him on 10 wins from 14. That would go level with Oi and Shaw. And it would also go level with Ruiz on points, but... Ruiz is finished. He's played his 15, so Ruiz sits in second. 10 points from 15 matches. So that just tells you where we're at. Yeah, if I look at the whole field, who has the most stable progress over the five days? It's back line, actually. If I'm thinking back. Yeah, I every right. day I see him at the table, he's better. Yes, I think you're right. Well, he was one of two players, him and Alvin was undefeated for a few matches. I think it was three or four. Yeah. So this nine ball for the match. That's and there it line. is. The match, five racks to three. It's Alex, the lion, Pagalion, laughing with Skyler there because he knows he was a little fortunate with a couple of golden breaks. However, Pagalion gets the point as he beats Woodward, five racks to three. tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability after all they are designed by players for players
This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo, Champion of Champions! Welcome back to day five, the evening session. We know the 10 players who have made it through to the next stage. Another match left. Woodward also has another match left. There you can see he's down in nine. Thank you players, when you're ready, please lag for break. There's the shake of hands, here is the lag. Players must be good at the lag now, Alex, after all these days. Yeah, you would reckon, look at this, one of the best. Good timing for you to make that call. Albert Ocean wins the lag. And a tight call for the referee. Ocean gets to break first. He won track. earlier today Ocean to break. against FSR. Last against Wu. 
It's go time for Albin. Needs to step it up. And he knows it. And he's one of the best at it. One of the best in finding that next gear halfway a tournament. Yeah, I know you're probably thinking the one ball's constantly going in the side pocket. It didn't then. It is actually not an easy thing to keep repeating. I think the fact that all the players have played that much pool in five days, so they've just found the sweet spot. It's about straight on the two ball to combo the six. And therefore, it's inviting but far from easy. Simple yet effective roll up. The hit isn't so difficult. The first thing you would look at, at, at a player is to hit these two rails, but then the eight ball is, and the six ball are huge. We then maybe try to hit it underneath. Sent the two ball down table. Ooh, nice hit. Nice try, didn't fully snooker. Still a great attempt. I thought, and I've watched a lot of Ocean pull, that he went down on the shot pretty fast. Looked like he rushed it. That's a mistake. Should have been a hook. Gets away with it, Ocean back at the table with an open position. First chance of the match. Three and four grouped together, the five and six grouped together. Should really not be a problem. Interesting, because he played that four pretty quick, just one warm-up stroke. Now he's come back for a second time to look at the angle on the six. One of the, I think, most telling things if you're trying to get a feel for where a player is mentally. His rhythm. Five. Is he stalling? Trying to force a rhythm? Or is it a nice balance between rhythmic play when he can and taking more time when he must? Speed is just right. Won the leg, had the first break. Now Persian wins the rack. And after.
Who are out now, as you said before, Alex. So, Alden Ocean. Filling one rack to nil. He's on eight points from 14. If he can beat Pagalayan, that puts him on nine from his 15. And Pagalayan will stay on 10 from 15. So it just shows you the importance now of these these matches where we get the, the creme de la creme playing each other. Yeah, nine would be mid-range if Elbin gets there. 11, then you're up there. It's going to be tough. It's going to be rough. Some players playing four matches tomorrow. Others will be playing five. Yeah, so Conrad Yushishan has played all his matches, 15. He's on nine points. He sits in sixth place. SVB is in 10th. He's got one match to go, and he's on seven points. So if he wins that match, yeah, he only goes one point behind sixth place. I'm sure come tomorrow, start of play. You know, we'll be having big discussions about where we're at, but that is where we're at right now as Pagalayan, unusual, doesn't get a hook. Has protected the two ball, sort of. Now, Alvin is looking at the gap between the nine and eight. Or maybe to see if he can bank it short. But I think the gap between the nine and eight, possibly with top spin to hold the cue ball. Would rather not have made the two. I mean, if it rattles, okay, drop. But from where he is now, not easy. Can he cross it and avoid the pocket, low right? Mm. Good queuing, full hit. What an opening in between the five and nine. Don't think he can hit the low side of the three. Extension. To Extension. And put the three ball near the second diamond. It's hitting the top side. Played as a shot to nothing. Now, what is the opening between the seven and eight? Can he make it? Extension, Extension code. It's close. If he just about cannot make it, then with right spin, he can twirl the three ball in. It's okay to make the three, but he's seeing if he can follow through. Good pot. That's it in position. Little unlucky that Peggy Lyon, after missing that bank, left an opening in between the seven and eight. But he'll also feel, I think, that he missed that bank by too wide a margin.
Nothing wrong with Albin's ball striking this tournament. Spends little time over the ball. It's mere, more, and he admits it, that in an end game, a couple of close games he has played where he made the wrong choice. 4-4. Four, four. Put himself in a bad spot, leading up to a miss. Over on the other table, El Gamdir, the young 17-year-old. He's about to go on the hill versus Melin. Al Gamdi's only won three matches here this week. Many of us, myself included, I'm not sure about yourself, Alex, but I thought he was going to do a little better than he has. I think he's been a little edgy, a little nervous, but all the same, good experience for the young man this week. He won the SVB Junior Open back at last year's US Open Nine Ball Championships. And Rack three. Albert Ocean to break. Now he finds Getting himself here in playing in this year's PLP. Alvin's second break. First time he made the one in the corner pocket, top right. Side pocket is where that one is supposed to go. Ended up on the rail, so he's hampered, cannot do too much. Mm. It's tight. That four ball's a big ball. If he would try to clip the two and let that cue ball slide in between the rail and the four. It's on, but it's very tight. Okay. Soft and thin. Good lucky there. Was a difficult shot. And he rather took the risk than playing a push out and giving Peggy Lai an option. Okay. Now here it's not said that Peggy Lai will play to make the two. He can also hit a tick. Send the cue ball down table. Well, whatever his intention was, the five and eight ball are now separated. Code. Shot. Yeah, very good hit that. Just off straight. Put a bit of right English on the ball just to. Get it moving to the center of the table. Now he's got a nice little angle here, can just roll up for the purple into the top left. Then it's just a case of connecting the dots here. Yeah, connecting the dots, but at the same time, taking nothing for granted. It's easy, especially on the speedy cloth with the super slick balls, to lose concentration, lose the cue ball. And out of nowhere, and that's actually what we've seen with Khalid Al Gamdi. You know, when you have the wreck one, you lose position, you miss a ball, and then it goes from bad to worse. Stay focused.
many winning opportunities have gone astray with uh, Khalid. side of the nine. Smooth. Well, it's one-way traffic at the moment. This is all Albion Ocean as he takes rack three to lead. Pagalayan three racks to zero. Welcome back. The match we are watching is Ocean versus Pagalion. Pagalion's going to break, yet to Rack win a four. rack. Alex Pagalion's break. <laughs> over on the other table, Al Gamdi got the win over Melling. So just a nightmare for Melling this week. Al Gamdi finishes on four points, so he's not going to finish last. Don't know what happened there with Peggy Lyons' cue. That was. <laughs> that looked odd. Yeah, in an open position for Albin. What's the trick here? Maybe difficult to get close to the three ball. all about angle this especially on on this tv table if your angle is right because it's so slick you don't need a lot of speed or stroke to bring backspin over to the object ball so distance doesn't matter so much you can still hit the ball smooth perfect angle this slide it in low right to center table A little bit of care and attention. I think he'll go to the low side off of the five. Just about good. At the 
big window to land in there, so he will have been annoyed to hook himself behind the nine. The fact that it's just creeped out is okay. Yeah, it makes it look effortless. Speed control so good. This is a good result for the neutral fan out there because, as I said, this will just bump Albin up a little bit. He'll keep Pagalai in there. Notion wins the yeah, match. that's what I was thinking. We want to see as much drama comprimed in the next three days. A fight. Preferably, you know, that it goes down on Sunday to the last matches, the last racks. Then that if player A wins an extra rack against player B, that it means that player C will be eliminated and player D will go through. That's the fun about a uh, round robin format and the horror for the players themselves. I mean, if you put yourself in that position, if you're leader of the board, you're safe and independent. Changing shafts on his break you. Rack five. I expect break on the same hill. type of shaft, four. but a different tip. Looks like a harder tip. Six balls in one quadrant. It will be difficult to find the save or play a push out from here. This is difficult on the left side. I was thinking the middle diamond on the short rail. I don't see middle diamond short rail. Push I don't cool. think there would be a real aggressive safety available. Let me see what Peggy Lyon could play from here. Alex, your choice. Hmm. I think I will give this back. You have clarity of mind, uh, Carl. You see something? Control passed. Please reset the shot clock. Well, I won't lie. I was watching Strickland on table two, Alex. I was just seeing what <laughs> shot he was going to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's just started out his match against So So, and he was jacked up and he fired a two ball, and that was lovely. If you want to watch Strickland play his last match of this year's event, Match Room Multisport YouTube channel is where you can catch the action. Extension called. He's playing so, so. Okay, let's have a look what Albin has got. I don't know. I don't know what he had in mind. I don't know if he can bank the two ball over towards the six one rail. Just try and nestle up towards the five, the purple five. <laughs> Super difficult. <laughs> oh, what a shot. He didn't get him. Two balls partly or fully exposed. Beautiful try. Well, beautiful, beautiful period because he got it. Can't do a lot right, Alex Pegulain, in this match. Played strong in the previous one. Played good and at the rolls. But the luck has turned. Okay. 
good speed there from Alvin just to give himself a look at this red ball. Checking to see if he can cut it. If not, full in the face. He can squat the cue ball behind the seven. Not content. Seems like a good effort to me. Full ball snooker. Now, ideally, Pegulain could get behind the four off of two rails. But the seven is big. It's possible he can still get there because of the top spin and the sliding on this TV table. Extension code. That he can sort of arc around the seven. with a little bit of right spin. Oh, beautiful, beautiful hit. Nice touch. Yeah, I would like to see more between Elvin Ocean and Alex Pegeline. Both very strong in the defensive part of nine ball. You'll see some tricks back and forth. Yeah, well, the good news is they are going to play again this week. We know that. In the next stage, they're going to meet. Looking to whitewash Alex Pegulain. Two shots needed, and then step one, stage one is finished. Elvin Ocean to go through to stage two with nine wins out of 14 matches. A very solid evening session by the Austrian. Match ball. There it is, a donut. Alvin Ocean five, Pagalayan zero. Up next, yeah. it's Eagle Eye, Jason Shaw. He will play Long Duck Tien. against an opponent of this 
its quality. Not quite as close as it's been from in the last couple of rounds. Diamond Paragon Pool Table. Diamond tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality, sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs. Diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability. After all, they are designed by players for players. This championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor-sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMF Ranger of Ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMF, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo Champion of Champions! It's time for a little bit of damage down Pagal Lion, the first stage of this event is over for you. Nine wins from 15. Are you happy with that? Well, I'm glad it took a, a good ending for me. Uh, day three and four were quite rough. Um, some heavy losses, but uh, 
I've been in a different position last year, but um, I think overall I'm happy. And of course, I played a, a perfect set in the inning, which I'm happy with. Yeah, you're up to seventh in the league table. Just obviously the defending champion. How difficult is it to win an event like this? And why is it so different to all the other pool tournaments? Well, it's it. I feel it's like a little boot camp actually. Um, I think to win the tournament, you got to win like 31 matches, or you play 31 matches. I think I saw Sanjin got or could maybe make uh, 13 wins out of 15, which is of course a comfortable lead already for stage two. Um, but you never know, you know. We play nine matches in the next stage in two days. Um, everything can happen. We saw basically you can lose to everybody. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm ready now and uh, I'm here to fight. Yeah, you're in a good position now. Just a quick word on uh, Pagalain. What happened on his break shot? I, I couldn't believe I thought I'm going to die inside. Um, he broke from the left, um, which was unusual, and uh, he kind of hit the rail with the cue, the cue, or he lost the cue in his bridge and hit his face. I don't know if we can get that in, in a recap or something. <laughs> we have to like um, put it on social media. That was hilarious. I was, I was so hard laughing inside. But uh, yeah, it's one of those days. Well, I'm sure he's all right. And you yeah. are sat nicely in the league. We'll let you go and get some rest because Thanks. plenty more pool to play, buddy. Yeah, a little bit more. See you tomorrow. Well done, buddy. See you. Shaw currently third in the table, ready, please, like long the since secured his place in the next phase. For Long Duc Tien, it's time to sign off. This is his last match. Jason Shaw wins the lag. The first rack, Jason Shaw to break. Nice break off there. Didn't add the extension to the queue there. I haven't really watched Jason play today. So I wonder if that's a, a change or or maybe something a little experimental going into what will be the final 10 players. Don't really see him as having too many problems with the break this week so far. I know he's been working with Steve Feeney, the site right coach. I think I saw Steve here today, so. Maybe it's a result of some conversation they've been having. Yeah, it's amazing in today's game how many things are much more picked apart and, and really looked through. And, and that's just like Jason having the knowledge to go to that man and, and try and do some things before this event, especially pretty smart. Not saying the Premier League isn't a big event, but it isn't quite the World Nine Ball Championships. He gets to put in a lot of matches, gets a lot of time with what they've worked on in some pressure moments. Well, we've seen a number of golden breaks here this evening, but apart from those, that's about the quickest rack we've seen in the whole tournament. Jason Shaw, Jason Shaw racing away with it, and he leads Long Duck TN 1 0. So as I said, this is Long Duc Tien's last match. He's got five wins so far. He can move above Chris Melling and claim 11th place, which makes a small difference in terms of prize money. What have you made of the man from Vietnam this week? Well, I made a lot of them, actually. I'm very impressed with, with many things and started off a little rough, a little bit like the ladies in the event, that maybe getting a little comfortable, but a lot of talent. I was surprised he was 30 years old. I would have guessed a lot closer to 20 years old, but 
very nice guy when I got to talk to him. And I'll tell you, there were many other players because he was in here practicing a lot that I had discussions with that were very impressed with his game as well. So I think we're going to see a lot more from him in the future. Yeah, he got himself back into contention to get through when he made a really good start to yesterday. He beat Chris Melling and Earl Strickland back to back. Only lost one rack in total in those two matches. But then lost the style of Woodward last night and beaten by Chu Chi Yu already today. So this will be his swan song in this event. He's got a 2 9 combination that's playable. I think the 7 isn't covering up the pocket or the path to the pocket. Figure probably a safety though, and you never know. Let me play the combo. Looks like he's going to bank the two away and kind of cross over the nine and back maybe behind the nine. Oh, he can cut it in. Wow, what a shot. That's one thing I, I really liked what I've seen from him. He stayed very aggressive throughout the event. Sometimes it didn't work out, and, and more so at the beginning. And he's had a lot of losses here. Uh, you know, I would say two or three of them again trying to get comfortable but then again he's playing the best players in the world so it's not like he has you have to play bad to lose sometimes it's just a it's a matter of we've seen a lot of quality matches by both opponents just somebody's got to move on he's generally been playing guys much much higher than him in the rankings he's number 128 in the world and when you consider at the start of 2023 he wasn't even in the top 200 that shows you what a big leap forward this is for him to be playing in this sort of company. Part of a real pool boom that's going on in Vietnam at the moment. A break and run from Shaw in the opening rack. Long response in kind, and that's why it's one all. Still to come, Sanyan Pelovanovic against Shane Van Boning. If Pelovanovic wins that, he'll finish with 13 wins from his 15 matches, and that would equal the record, albeit in the very brief history of this tournament so far, set last year by Joshua Filler. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I mean, the end certainly capable, capable of beating Jason in this spot. That would end Jason with 10 wins. And again, Skyler. After Jason losing his break. last, he was a little upset Scores about it. One rack each. He knows he needs to improve, so he plays Oi later. Sanjin wins that match. He could he could have a probably as big a lead as this event has seen going into the final ten. With a with a three three match win advantage over the rest of the field. Yeah, Filler was too clear of the rest going into the second phase last year. And also, talking of last year, it ended up being 15. That was the target at the end of phase two. But that was a bit of an unusual situation because Omar Al Shaheen lost eight of his nine matches. So that perhaps raised the bar in terms of how many matches you needed to win to get through. I think looking at it this time, 14 or maybe even 13 could get you through to the final day. Pelovanovic could be on 13 by the end of tonight. Yeah, and it's just like we talked about with the 16 players. If you have, you know, out of the 10, if you just have one, like you said, like Omar last year that lost, uh, you know, a huge amount of matches percentage-wise, things change quickly. But if you have two of those players that do something like that, the number can change drastically as well. So that's why it's still into your own hands, right? You can't worry about everything going on. Just go out and try and play your best. Another quick rack. Yeah, you can't see better quality nine ball than this. It's unlikely you could see much faster nine ball than this. Because in no time at all, we've arrived at the first short interval with Jason Shaw leading by two racks to Jason one. Jason Shaw wins the rack. Six hopefuls go into action over six days. When an irresistible force meets an immovable object, 
something is got to give, but nothing is given yet. Final of a matchroom promoted tournament, the majors in the game. And up on the wrong end against an opponent of this quality. Not quite as close as it's been for him in the last couple of rounds. Jason Shaw is safely through to the next phase of the Premier League, but no let up at all from him in his performance in this match right, so far. Four. They're both playing well, it seems. Shaw leads, though, 2-1. Two two one. one catching the point and running to the upper corner. Interesting, the 2-9 and nine in a very similar position as his first break off. Don't think he's going to go for the cut here, though. Should become some kind of soft pass across the across the two, bringing the cue ball behind the five seven. Nice effort. Got the two past the side, so the jump shot difficult. Don't think you're going to see Jason go to the air with the five covered up. Wants to make sure he doesn't lose the cue ball here and surrender ball in hand. Four, two to five can be very difficult later in the rack. It's got to go a little bit. Cue ball or two ball, and he did surrender nice ball in hand. And I don't ball think he got too cute with the Please shot stop, there. Stop. Some might say that just a little lacking on speed. And I think Jason really good at those containing kick shots at the right moments. But what the end is recognized quickly is if he gets on the four in the right manner, he can kind of push forward past the eight for short side position on the five for the lower left corner. It's a touchy position shot, even though the four is in a good spot. You can be off by like an inch and it could make you to where you just can't get position. I think he's gotten pretty perfect here, though. Like to stay off the rail, but first things first is getting shape on the five. He made it to the single elimination stage of the World Championship in Poland last month and gave John Mora a good contest. Pushed him to 11-8. Mora, of course, went on then to beat Shaw in the next round. Yeah, and John's in fine form. I'll tell you, it took a, and it may have been the match of the tournament or one of them for sure between him and Mario He for him to have to exit that event. So Soa over on table two is three balls away from beating Earl Strickland 5-1. Here on one, the high quality continues. And for the second time, Long Duck Tien has drawn level at two apiece. And let's see the final moments of this Premier League for both of these players. They both went into this match knowing they wouldn't be going through to the next phase. So Soa is going to avoid finishing bottom. Chu Chi Yu will drop to last place, having won three of her 15 matches. Osoa is going to end the week with four wins. 
memorable campaign for her. She's done about as well as she could have hoped, I think. She's beaten some very good players. Conrad Yushishin, Albin Ocean, most notably, and Chris Melling. And she's finished off with a win over one of the greatest of all time. Yeah, I was thinking about that, what you had mentioned earlier about players, you know, getting the privilege of playing Earl. And you played really well. I think that was definitely one of the cases there. You can see a big smile on her face. They shook hands. Yeah, Earl Strickland hasn't exited every tournament in his career with a smile on his face, but he did there, and uh, he's been great to have around this week. Yeah, it's it's been a, a roller coaster of sorts for Earl this week, but uh, I think he was happy to be here to play, and he gave it his all. It just fell a little short. We'll see what Jason, who's a very creative player, sees a lot of shots, so I'm interested to see what he plays here. He can push through softly on the three using the four. Good effort here. And the reason why this is so much better is even if you leave a little bit of a piece of this ball, which he didn't, your opponent's going to have to knock this in and gather shape on the pink four all the way back up the table. Extension code. There you go. Well, he couldn't hit that any better if he wasn't snookered, Michael. Just shoot straight at the ball. Looking at the implications of that so so a win, as I said, it means she won't finish bottom. Chu Chi Yu take that position. But so now moves on to four wins to finish with, and her rack's difference is minus 23. Strickland also ends on four wins, but his rack's difference now goes to minus 24. So she'll actually not only have beaten Earl Strickland, she'll have finished above him in the table. Yeah, and she'll look back at that, and I think just the match itself was probably the highlight for her. Yeah, I think so. And she's only 21 years of age, remember, so... She's really been one of the players who's made a name for herself this week in Leicester. Much more to come, to be sure. Every rack so far in this match has been won by the breaking player. Until now, Long Duck Tien leads for the first time at 3 2. Oh, yeah. Wins the rack. Well, very swiftly back into it over on the other table. Nayuki Oi against Skylar Woodward. They're lagging at the moment. Oi has got 10 wins. Woodward has got seven. It's the last match for both of them in this opening phase. First rack, Scala will put to break. And as we keep reminding you, if you want to watch any of the Table 2 action at any point of the tournament, Matchroom Multisport YouTube is where you can do just that. Long Duck Tien has broken that pattern of every rack going with the break, and he's got the break himself now in rack six. Rack six. Long Duck Tien to break. Leading three racks to he's two. He's playing for position as well. If he wins this match, he'll go above Chris Melling and claim 11th spot. He's going to love this opener here on the two ball. Three near. All the work is at the bottom end of the table, so 
Always tricky going into the side pocket from different angles, so he's got to pay attention to this first shot. But past that, he really should clear this and take a two-game lead. So much potential for Poole in Vietnam. Producing a number of very good players. We saw Duan Quoc Hang and the impact he made at the World Championship last month. And it's a very big country, Vietnam. It's one of the biggest in the world, population of about 100 million. And it's not a country with much history of success on the international sporting stage. So one of their pool players comes through and becomes one of the best in the world. You would imagine that's going to get huge attention back home. Yeah, absolutely. And even this, you know, the, like you said, the bigger countries, the smaller countries are very much like that, always searching for some type of champion in some sport or another. And if they find that, they, they you know, get right on the on the bus and bandwagon and, and support it. And I think you're going to see many countries start to follow pool a little more these days. Well, you look at the field for any of those big field events that we have now, and it's like one of the big tennis events. It's so global. Long Duc Tien wins Another the good rack then for Long Duc Tien. He was 2-1 down, but three in a row. He leads Jason Shaw 4-2. Duc Tien playing very nicely here as he says goodbye to this year's Premier League. He won't be going through to the next phase, but he may Back leave seven. on a very high note. He leads Jason, Jason Shaw 4-2. Four four well, the cue ball is going to take that spin That's and done. surrender ball in hand and possibly a 2-9 combo. This is a runnable table as well. And Dan has really played perfect in this match, pretty much. Oh, well, Jason has played Please very well, fun. also just a little bit of a mistake on that kick shot earlier. I think that was it. Played a nice safety that Dan made a great jump shot and get ran out behind. So just as I spoke, his first mistake here on a positional shot, he will attack, I think, and have a good chance of making the nine as well. side bank the six nine got pretty ugly though the fives near it though so I think he still stays offensive trying to run out Shot 
sure loses this match, as seems increasingly possible. It will have been a very disappointing day for him. He'll have played three and lost them all. And okay, he was safe for getting through to the next phase anyway, but of course now it's all about taking forward as many wins as you can. Well, effectively a wasted day for him. Comes away with none out of three, having won six in a row before that over the last couple of days. Well, that's surprising that he didn't get into those balls, the 6-9, and the way he was coming into them, maybe try to get a little too much speed. Just you got to remember, when the balls are out in the center of the table, away from the rail, it doesn't take much to open them. And he's going to, I guess he's going for the cross Extension corner cold. bank. Doesn't appear a safety there. Now strike. Ball in hand. Please start the clock. Well, that is probably going to result in his sequence of winning racks being snapped. Good news for Luong, though, is that He'll still have the break in the next rack. Jason Shaw might have felt his Friday action was coming to an end. Jason Shaw wins the rack. He'll still have one more rack to play, at least. He closes to 4-3. Skylar Woodward has taken the opening rack on the other table against Noyuki Oi. Look at that, and... It's still a stage one match, but really effectively it's part of stage two now because I'm saying all the wins will carry forward. Before we can win that and get to 11, you would look at it and think he might only need to win perhaps three of his nine matches in phase two to get to the last day. Yeah, all these players, though, they really have no let up in them. Even the players that have been qualified now for some time, you can see them they're practicing between matches and getting as much time on the table as they can. The end to break. On the hill, leading four racks to three. Still on the hill, but this time with the break. ball did come clear so a shot on the three not easy but definitely one he's a big favorite and he'll certainly attack with he's just got to make a little decision with the cue ball just because the black eight kind of disrupting at least one of the natural pass with a high ball so he may stun this two rails towards the center of the table makes this one I like his chances It's got to slow down just a little bit, but should be okay. I think it's fair to say he'll have come into this tournament more in hope than expectation. Would have been absolutely delighted to get an invite into this sort of company. He's had his moments. Beat So Soa. That was his only win in his first four matches. Overcame Khalid Al Gamdi, Alex Pagalai, and he beat as well. That was perhaps his best result. Earl Strickland. Perhaps his most memorable, given Strickland's status in the game. He also beat Chris Melling without losing a rack. Back-to-back -back defeats in his last two matches. He's just a few balls away now from finishing on a high. He can come away from here with six wins out of 15 in this sort of company. He'll have plenty of confidence to take forward for the rest of the year which includes the opportunity to play for world ranking points in his home country in May at the Vietnam Open, part of the Asian Tour. And it is all over now. It's going to be his sixth win and arguably his best performance of the entire tournament.
saving it for last. No, that's the end, wins the match. He wins five by three. five racks to three. Disappointing day for Jason Shaw. He's lost all three of his matches, but he'll be back tomorrow for the next phase, and we'll be back in a few minutes with Shane Van Boning and Sanyan Pelovanovic. pool table. Diamond tables are designed and manufactured from the highest quality, sustainable hardwoods utilizing world-renowned designs. Diamond tables are unparalleled for playability and durability. After all, they are designed by players for players. Championship is being played with the new RMS tournament set. Featuring a unique molecular structure, it guarantees razor sharp precision and unsurpassed longevity. Unquestionably the best pool balls in the world, this set is available in a TV and a value pack version, as well as in the new My RMS range of ball and Q cases. Now you can bring and play with the best ball set everywhere you go. My RMS, bringing new dimensions to your billiards experience. Of the Kazoo Champion of Champions!
you're going down, go down swinging. And that's exactly what Long Duck Tien did. He knew going into his match against Jason Shaw that he'd be exiting the tournament at this stage. But he produced perhaps his best performance of the week to beat the former US Open champion by five racks to three. And it means he'll finish as best of the rest. Just outside the top ten, who will go through to the next phase. He finishes with a very respectable six wins from his 15 matches. And you can see the world rankings of the players in brackets there. And that underlines just what a step up in class this was for him. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more from Long Duck Tien. We'll see Jason Shaw again tomorrow in phase two. Into the last match of this first phase on table two, Skylar Woodward and Noyuki Oi currently level at two apiece. You can see some of the other matches there have been on table two throughout this evening's session. Most notably that win for Sosoa, really, in terms of her career. Landmark moment to beat the great Earl Strickland. Strickland was in action on table one earlier in the evening, lost to Skylar Woodward. That clinched Woodward's place in the next phase. Although he then lost his next match to Alex Pagalion, who in turn was beaten 5-0 by Alban Ocean. And then there was that win for Luong just a few moments ago. So the final match of this phase on the main table is Shane Van Boning and Sanyan Pelovanovic. I think if you've been told at the start that it's going nice. into this You're match, ready? one of these players would be top of the table, and the other one would be bottom of the 10 going through to the next phase. He would almost certainly have got it the wrong way round. But Pelovanovic has been an absolute revelation this week, Jeremy. Yeah, I was thinking about, or we were talking about and this Pelovanovic afternoon. Wins the lag. He's just growing and, and uh, evolving. It seems like every time we see him, had a great trip to Las Vegas. Silver medal at the, the World track. Games this past summer. And Jim Pelovanovic to break. Back in the U.S., losing a tight match to Filler. Could have won it. And I'll tell you another thing he's done real well here is he's broke the balls real well. So I'm sure that's going to continue. So Shane's got his hands full. Who's going to come free from the six? It's not the greatest shot, but it, I think a very playable cross side bank that does offer position. Yeah, definitely plays. And one he should shoot at. Now, Kioi made a great kick shot after an incredible jump shot from Skylar Woodward. He played a nice safety and Oi well, wasn't to be denied on a nice two rail kick, knocking the ball in with full intention. Kind of watch out for the cue ball. He's kind of sliding it down the rail here, I think. So it's a little touchy. I think words like records and history are very much overused in sport and in other contexts nowadays, but. It is just a fact that if Pelovanovic wins this match, he will equal the record for the most wins in the first phase of the Premier League, set last year by Joshua Filler. Now, you might say, well, that's only two stagings of the tournament you're drawing that from, but kind of record that could stand for a long time, because when you consider how strong the field is for this event, it's going to be very hard for anyone to top in years to come. Yeah, you could have really eight of the top players along with you know, eight semi-pro players, right? Just very good players, and you don't have to run that that well or, or play that well and have it hold up. The remarkable thing is, Pelovanovic actually lost his opening match last Monday against Skylar Woodward, so it's 12 wins out of 13 since then. And the one he lost was Hill Hill. Yeah, and any time you're matching feats with a guy like Josh Filler, you're doing things right. And probably more than any one player, he's kind of gotten into the game, you know, kind of playing by himself out there into that same routine every time, hadn't varied a whole lot. We've seen some players really change their pace of play a lot. Um, 
maybe get a little too aggressive at times or, or even too passive. But he's been solid as a rock. Under hit that a little bit. He could he knew it right away. It's not going to cause a problem. It's just got to work the cue ball a little more. Perfect start then of his breaking rack. Here are three words that have been said a lot this week. Sandian Pelovanovic leads. Sandian Pelovanovic. And it's by one rack to nil against Shane Van Boning. Over on the other table, Noyuki Oi. 3 2 in front against Skylar Woodward. I think it's fair to say Woodward's need of a win is much greater than Oi's. He's only got seven at the moment to carry forward. Just uh, doing some maths here. We were talking at the start of the night about Woodward's three matches and how he had to win one of them to make sure of his place in the second phase. Well, as it's turned out with other results, I don't think he even needed to win a rack because I think if he'd lost every match 5-0, he still would have got through. And that old adage, hindsight's 20-20, right? But Skyler was, uh, I think, a little more Correct calm. Two. Of course, went went Shane a little food with him before we, he came up Brilliant for his one, evening finish. session, but a little more calm. But I could tell it's still very important to advance and try to make something special happen in the final ten. Uh, now strike. You see some frustration there from Shane, if you know him at least, and. He knows he's going to need something special in that final 10 as well. All in hand. I know you know him very well. Please and start the clock. You know, he's been your vice captain in the Moscone and Milton Keynes last April. You were very much his corner man during that World Championship winning campaign. So have you been talking to him about how he's been playing this week? Uh, not as much. A little bit different schedules um, here and there. I've talked to him a lot this year, though, and just reminded him of how well he's playing. And you know, I talked about it a couple of days ago. I think that I think he's ready for a little time off. <laughs> you know, I, I really do. And he's not taking it off here. Don't get me wrong. He's put, he puts in a maximum effort. He's not that type of player. But but we're all human, and and uh, and I can kind of tell he needs a, a little R and R. Get rebooted for what is going to be another incredible year for pool, for nine ball pool here in 2023. Yeah, he turns 40 this year. This man at the table is only 21. And what's really impressed me the most about him, Jeremy, is the fact that when he went on that big long run after losing his first match, he won his next eight. And it was quite early on in that run that obviously people were sitting up and taking notice of the fact that he was winning all these matches. But the added pressure and expectation of that didn't seem to bother him in the slightest. He's just kept on winning, and it's such a good sign. Yeah, like I said, I think he's just evolving in all kinds of ways. And he sits and watches also. I mean, he's he's not taking time off. You know, he's got to, you know, get his food and get his rest and whatnot that, that we all need. But as soon as his matches are over, he's either practicing or, or if the tables are taken for matches coming up, he's upstairs watching the matches and trying to take things in at all times. And uh, whether you're conscious of it or not, that, that does you wonders. I think in terms of things like that, professionalism, demeanor, personality, and maybe even a little bit in terms of appearance, he reminds me quite a bit of Alban Ocean. Well, he's kind of, that's kind of what I alluded to earlier, that he's really not taking any time off any shot during the week, and that's really what Alvin's kind of known for, someone who's a worker through the rack, wants to get the premium out of each shot. And 
again, the players these days, the difference is years ago. We were playing, we were trying to win. He's certainly trying to win, but at the same time, he's absorbing and he's very conscious of doing that as well. So hard to take a loss at any moment, but when you know you're learning as you're doing it, even the two losses he had this week, uh, it, it wasn't too harmful. Sanchez Pelovanovic wins the rack. Yep, and this has been basically perfection so far. Sanjan Pelovanovic leading Shane Van Boning by two racks to nil. We're moving towards a conclusion in the last match of the day on the other table, Naoki Oi and Skylar Woodward now level at three all. So just to recap on what's going to happen here over the weekend, the next two days, the ten players who have made it through to the next phase will have another round-robin section where they'll all play each other across Saturday and Sunday. All wins carried forward. Then you'll add on the wins from phase two and the top six from those ten at the end of Sunday's play will come back on Monday for the final day of the Premier League. Rack three. Andrew Pelovanovic to break. Leading two racks to nil. Yeah, playing well getting shots after the break and you can say what you want. We hear players talk about the shots after the break, but you still have to complete the runs and continually do it. It can't be just here and there. Funny little shot coming out of the pocket. It always is on the slick table. That's why you see so many players at times draw the cue ball out of there, but he's just going to chip it on the right side, his right side and just kind of lightly coast. Uh, he put a little more into that ball, and anytime you do that, that can get away from you. He ended up pretty perfect, though. The form he's showing here this week, of course, is by no means entirely out of the blue. You mentioned earlier he had that. Good run at the Las Vegas Open. Up to the final there. But prior to that, he'd had a very solid 2022 in the very biggest events. Last 16 of the UK Open, last 16 of the European Open, where he pushed Van Boning hard before losing. Beat Lucius Yap in the US Open to get to the last 32. He's very much a player who's been steadily building over the last 18 months or so. And looks very hungry to continue that progress. Yeah. Skylar Woodward now leads Naoki Oi 4-3 on the other table. If Oi wins that match, he'll go into the next phase in second place in the table. Well, you just can't play pool better than this. No, he's been solid in all departments. And again, the tempo around the table has been so consistent. And it's taken him into a 3-0 lead.
Van Boning has not yet potted a ball in this match. Back four. He trails Sanjan Pelovanovic 3-0. Trailing three racks to nil. Looks like the cue ball is spun in a perfect position on the two. The three's near. A little work from the four to the five, but... Shane should pocket his first ball here in a moment. He really overall should get out. Cut the score to 3-1. We'll see. And Skylar Woodward just missed a a long, tough eight ball, but one he's definitely a favorite to make to end that match and get a big point going into the final ten. Now well, this was just what Van Boney needed, not just to get a rack on the board, but a swift one. Get his arm going, establish a bit of rhythm. Largely a spectator. In the first three racks, all he did was play one shot and scratched from it. Mario but he's Fiori. won that rack. Shane Van Benning, so it's now 3-1. And four all on the other table, Oi and Woodward. Remember, Oi will finish second in this phase of the tournament if he wins that match. $20,000 for the winner of this title out of a total prize fund of 100000 Good money to be playing for and so many events with much bigger money later in the year. Some of the big open events with Matchroom, you're looking at prizes more in the region of 30 and going up to then 60000 for the very biggest events. These top players now are making substantial money from the game. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz last year won over a quarter of a million dollars. Three racks to one. Which was more than he'd earned in total in his entire career up to then. Many riches will await Sanyan Pelovanovic in the future if he can keep playing the way he has been this week. And he's breaking at 3-1 up. I think he's going to get another offensive look at the two. It's real close at the eight. It's a little precluding, right? But it appears it's open. Not easy, though. He's going to have to dig on the cue ball. Does get this down, the three and the four near each other. Getting position back on the five. That's some work. Big shot here. Real 
nice shot. He bumped the eight out of position a little bit, but not to fret, at least not this early in the rack. The seven's in a good position to maybe play it in the side and get on the eight. He's going to come across the table for the four in the opposite right side. I don't know if he's going to really get a second rail here or if he's going to add some inside English. Maybe both. Oh, he caught that thick and the first time he kind of pulled the trigger quickly, at least in this match that I've noticed. He's got to load this up with a lot of right spin as well. See the delayed reaction. That's because the cue ball and the object ball were so close to each other. Kind of takes the energy after contact. Like he's got dead straight here and he really can't get above the six. He may have to take it on in the upper left. That's what he's sizing up at the moment. Now Kioi in a good position to move into that second position. Yeah, three balls away from completing a 5-4 win over Skylar Woodward. I know last year Woodward had a lot of ground to make up going into the second phase, but then won seven of his nine matches there. Might need something similar if he's to make it through to the final day again in 2023. Ayuki Oi last year didn't even get past the first phase. This time, He's going through in second place with 11 wins from his 15 matches. And I know I can say this without sounding in any way disrespectful to either of the players, but at the start of the week, if someone had said from this field that Sanyan Pelovanovic and Nayuki Oi would be the top two going into phase two, it would have seemed extremely unlikely. Meanwhile, back here, Van Bonin has broken down. Yeah, it was an odd shot because the eight didn't pass the nine. And the problem was the side pocket was a little in the way of really where he wanted to hit with the cue ball coming off the brown seven. So kind of tried to force it a little bit and just barely overcut the seven. Okay. Extension. Extension code. It's an odd shot as well. Only reason his position isn't very natural at all. He's drawing the ball, wow. He's really going to let the stroke out here, Michael. This cue ball should arc quite a bit. And it's got to slide a little bit just to get some type of bank. He can play a two-way, the eight and the nine. Pelovanovic is playing at the uh, moment. Uh, He's in that mode where anything you do wrong is likely to cost you. And that's what happened there to Shane Van Boning. Missed the seven. And as a result, he now finds himself trailing by four racks to one. So this, the last match still out there to be completed in this first phase. This is how that rack came to an end. Yeah, and that was no fluke, going for the cross side bank on the eight and trying to carry him the nine into the corner. SVB to break the balls here in game six. I think if he is to take a rest from the game, as you were suggesting, he probably needs, Jeremy. Now would be a good time to do it because you look at May and Shake June, you've got UK Open, World Masters, World Cup, all those events. This is maybe a slightly quieter time. And look at that, a totally different break than you're used to seeing from Shane. Took a lot of speed off, maybe trying to experiment for the next couple of days. Not near as hard. Made the corner ball. Push, Push out tall. 
It almost looked like too soft just because of what we're used to and seeing from push. Shane. Well, I've never seen anyone get through the balls the way he did round about this time last year in this event and then the World Championship in particular. Balls were trembling in fear when they saw the cue ball hurtling towards them off the end of SVB's cue. Now he's going to attack and an alternate break format, you would think you should play every rack the same. And that's not really the case. I mean, I see it as a true sport because you can play a little bit of percentages here and there knowing that, oh, my opponent breaks next or I break next. I'm up four to one. There are some things that can vary. Nice shot there, threading the needle, needle with the cue ball. Excuse me. Looked a bit of a disconsolate figure at times this evening. I mean, he's got to keep battling because he really needs the wins. More than just about anyone going through to that next phase. And he still has a chance of winning this one. He's closed to 4-2. Shane Van Boning will be among the 10 players who come back here tomorrow for the second phase of this Premier League. But if he doesn't win this match, seven. he'll start from the and back of the grid. Break. Still has a chance of hill. winning it, though, four after four taking that two. sixth rack. Pelovanovic now breaking, though, with a 4-2 lead. Yeah, and you kind of feel like with two breaks to win this match here, and the way he's been breaking the balls and playing, that'd be it. A tough nut to crack for SVB. Uh, the two's going to stay near the rail, and it's going to be some something tactical to start here in game number seven. Off the clock. Frozen ball. Start the clock, please. Can you explain to people why the referee calls frozen ball? 
Well, after contact, uh, you have to either pocket a ball or drive the cue ball or another ball to, to the cushion. So when a cue ball, a ball is frozen to the rail, that rail is kind of, you know, it's kind of dead, meaning you can't just lay on on the object ball. You have to drive it to another cushion or play off the ball and go into with the cue ball into the rail, one of the two. It's a smart rule when it was devised because it makes things too easy sometimes in, in odd spots to play some type of soft safety, just being able to roll Extension on the ball. Cool. I don't know what a different game nine ball would be if that rule about hitting a cushion didn't exist. It would change the whole nature of it so much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And tactically, it would make uh, far lesser players uh, much more equal. All right, this two is going to come down somewhat near the cue ball. It's going to contact the pink. No. And it somehow went by the pink and ended up not leaving an offensive shot. I don't believe so anyway. This cue ball leaked a little bit, so the jump cue will be coming out. And definitely some opportunity here. I uh, hit it well, but if Sanjin holds true to what he's shown us this week, this should be curtains here. Think about SVB and what I was talking about with his, you know, needing maybe a little R and R, do a little something he likes, like the fishing, and he loves pool. Don't get me wrong, but you know, like you said, he's almost, he's going to be 40 this year, and he puts in as much time as these 21-year-olds still. And oh my, I was about to say, how does that not fall? A little delayed. I was thinking about golf. You know, golf's a little more physical, of course, but it's a lot between the ears, right? Uh, the game of golf. So I think it's similar that a lot of the top players are very particular with their schedule. They want to peak at the right moments. You don't need to tell us you've been thinking about golf, Jeremy. You're always thinking about golf. <laughs> Nothing well. changes there. I think if I got to play a little more, I wouldn't think about it so much, I think, Michael. Yeah, but then we wouldn't get to hang out so much. Yeah, well, I think my wife might be listening, so that was a little more for her than you, but. Okay. Really one shot away if he gathers position here on the seven. He's going to tie Filler with 13 wins out of 15 matches, something special. Well, that was phenomenal what Filler did last year. So many big names right behind him in the table, Pelovanovic, giants of the game. But he's got to remind himself he's played better than any of them over these first five days in Leicester. And he'll go into the weekend with every reason to believe that he can achieve a new career high by winning this Premier League. He's roared through to the second phase with 13 wins from 15 matches, and he's rounded it off.
First match, you won 13 out of 14 uh, to end this first stage. Could you ever imagine such an achievement with such a field? It was 15 out of 13, so I lost too. I lost uh, yesterday to Alex, my first match 5-4, but still good. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Uh, and did you know you tied the record with Filler with 13 wins out of 15 to start this event? Oh, I didn't know, to be honest. Maybe if I knew, I, w I would go for 14. <laughs> but I'm just enjoying the game, really, and enjoying the tournament. It's incredible. I'm feeling confident and uh, cannot wait for tomorrow. Yeah, well, once you win so many games in a row and so many matches in a row, does the pressure build a little? Uh, pressure goes down, to be honest, <laughs> as you win. But, uh, yeah, there is always pressure. I mean... I, I don't know. This tournament, I feel really confident, and I hope it stays like that, to be honest. Well, from what I've seen, it was no fluke, so congratulations and good luck this week. Thank you. And so that was phase one of the Premier League. I'll be back here tomorrow to start all over again, but with, as we keep reminding you, all those wins carried forward. Alban Ocean and Alex Pagaline will be first up on two. We'll have a double helping of Jason Shaw later in the day. And the second part of that will be the first part of a back-to-back -back run from Wu Kun Lin, who's got to be considered a bit contender after the way he turned things around from such a disappointing start. And our main focus will, of course, be on table one, where Wu Kun Lin kicks things off against Sanyam Pelovanovic, who will then play Shane Van Boning, who he's just beaten in the second match. FSR against Pagalion, SVB against Woodward, the two Americans. Woodward will then play Noyuki Oi, who in turn stays on to play Alex Pagalion. It's a wonderful lineup, whatever way you look at it. We've got four world champions in there, including the current one. We've got five Europeans. Three North Americans, two from Asia. It's 10 players from nine different countries. And a 21-year-old from Bosnia and Herzegovina is at the head of it all as we head in to what should be a wonderful weekend at the Premier League. Thanks for your company today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.